We're back. Thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. We're Sports Take, uh, Jacob Sports YouTube channel. Let's smash the like button, folks. We haven't gone on a like button uh, run in a while, so let's uh, let's do that if we could. Appreciate it. All right, so Derek, they have to go from 90 to 53 uh, by tomorrow at 4 p.m. That is yep. the cut down. Uh, it used to be done in stages. You remember yep. back in the day, it was a, it was. <laughs> I guess it had to be a little bit easier that way. I would think. I don't know, but um, nonetheless, so you, you chop down a pretty good number of guys here. So here's what we know so far, Derek. Uh, let's start with the offensive line. Cameron Tom, Dennis Kelly, Brett Toth, Josh Andrews, Tyrese Robinson, and Roderick Johnson. Roderick Johnson actually to the IR, but the other guys uh, on the outside looking in. Okay, we know that so far. I can't really say there's any shockers there. Um, you know, I mean, like a guy like Sil, uh, uh, Kelly, maybe, you know, the vet presence, Josh Andrews, but uh, Toth has been around a little. I don't know. I'm not, not surprising. Um, I thought, and you heard me say this a couple of weeks ago, I thought Dennis Kelly would be one of the backups. Yep. Um, and when the Eagles brought him in, um, they wanted to see if he had anything left. Now, he started out, had a decent camp. His last, The last preseason game, he didn't play that well, missing a few tackles, not sustaining blocks, and maybe that was the difference maker in cutting him. But um, obviously, they're going – they want to go younger. They want to stay younger. You know, you know, they, they've got their money invested – in their front line guys, and they're still trying to develop some younger guys behind them. So maybe Dennis Kelly just didn't fit that bill, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of that, um, and I thought Dan Arnold was going to emerge as the number two tight end. Right. You know, and now he's gone, you know. And, and like I said last week, if you look at his history, he's never had a high volume of catches, never had a high volume of yards, but he was a decent blocker. And I guess that wasn't enough. I mean, he got showcased the last preseason game. but. Yeah. I guess that wasn't enough to keep him as well. Um, I just thought with this experience, based on the other guy, other two guys that he was competing with, that he might bump one of those guys. But obviously, they like Stoll and, and Calcaterra where they are, more so than uh, what he was bringing to the table. Yeah. So you're, you're looking at essentially the same pecking order that you had last year at tight end. You're going Goddard. You're going Stoll. You're going Calcaterra. Stoll being more of the blocking type, Calcaterra more down the field, I mean, you know, when you're talking about guys after Dallas Goddard. So that not much change there um, at the tight end spot. And then receiver, Deion Kane, Johnny King, who came in a little bit later, tall guy, 6'5". Uh, Jaden Hasselwood uh, is another one. And then Freddie Swain, who came in, I he was more of a body for that last preseason yeah. game. Yeah. That's just what we know right now. Um, as far as the receivers go, obviously there's still stuff up in the air right now. Um, Ian book out, uh, but could, uh, could return to a practice squad. Kennedy Brooks out. There's just a numbers crunch at running back. We'll get into Trey sermon in a minute. Um, defensive tackle, Marvin Wilson, Caleb Sanders, uh, Olivier Sagapalu, Robert Cooper, uh, linebacker, Quentin Bell, Tyreek Maddox Williams, who another guy who came in a little late, but had a real good game on Thursday to his credit. Yep. Um, but so let, let's go back to um, to what you were just talking about here. Let, let, let's let's tackle the running back spot. Do you think Trey Sermon makes the team or could he be another guy that's on the trade block? Maybe like like Derek Barnett is. Um, I think the fact that he's caught up in a number a numbers game could cost him this time. I mean. You know, he said, well, he could he could supplant Boston Scott, but Boston Scott has value to this team, not just as a running back, but as a returner as well. And he's a sure-handed return guy. He's a sure-handed run, run, uh, runner, doesn't fumble much. Plus, the Eagles re-signed him to a, a, a $2 million contract, you know, which is low tier for a veteran running back. They, they love Boston Scott and what he brings to the table and the fact that he's a smaller back with speed, with power. So they like that change of pace in him. I think Trey Sermon just just gets caught up in a numbers game. There's no way he's going to supplant um, DeAndre Swift or Rashad Penny. You know, Gainwell still a young run back they like a lot who's on a rookie deal. When you look at the money they already have invested in the, in a quartet of running backs, which isn't a lot compared to most teams, I don't see him ups, upsetting that apple cart of the first four running backs. So I think Trey is the odd man out here now. Can they bury him on the practice squad? I don't think he would last an entire season as an emergency back on his practice squad. I look at the the lack of running backs in certain spots, Derek, like the Colts, for example. Yeah. 
I don't think there's any way they're going to hide Trey Sermon on the practice squad this year. Like I, I don't unless he makes the roster. I don't think he's an eagle. I think he will be snatched up. I really do. And that's why I can't see them. I can't see them keeping five active running backs. I don't either. Because one of those spots has got to be used. They, they like I said last year. I believe they kept ten offensive linemen. That's a lot of offensive linemen. But it is. You look at the depth they had at, at, at their defensive line. They, had, they were eight deep, you know, minimum eight deep on D line. That's 18 spots right there out of 53. Right. You know, are they going to keep five wide receivers? How many DBs are they going to keep? Six, seven? Mm-hmm. You know, um, linebacker. And, and especially if guys are playing special teams, too. Yeah. At, the, at certain spots. What about yeah. linebacking depth? They got to figure that out. Yep. Um, so I, I I just I cannot see them keeping five running backs. I don't no either. team no team keeps five running backs. Uh-uh. No, no. I, I, we'll talk about it later. I can't. The, the Chiefs are only keeping one backup quarterback. That's insane. I'm That's insane. shocked by that. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, I don't I don't see it happening. So I would say like, tell me if you disagree. Bubble guys, Trey Sermon definitely one of them. Yep. Um, what, do you think Britton Covey has this team made? No, I think it's uh. I think they sit behind closed doors and go over the pluses and minuses. What does he add to us? What is his liability? Now, he might make the 53 once they weigh the pluses and minuses, but I don't think it's a given that he makes this roster. He's a hustler. He competes, uh, doesn't turn the ball over. Right. He's sure-handed. Yeah, but security. Ball security. Deal. Yep. You know, but I'm sure they're looking for something a little different in a return game. Mm-hmm. You look at a lot of teams that have these – so call it returners that make you hold your breath every now and then when they catch the ball. Eagles don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I agree with you. All right. So, I, yeah, I, w- I would say he's up in the air. I, if I went to lean one way or the other, I think he's making it. And I, I know Eagles fans aren't going to be thrilled because he's not a, a game breaker, but he's not going to fumble it. You're at least going to get the ball back after there's a punt to him. But anyway, um, Greg Ward, are we looking at the practice squad again here? Uh, or could this be it this time? And he, you know, it's a shame he's he's a little banged up right now, which he didn't really have much of a chance to help himself either. I'm a big Greg Ward fan. Yeah. I think he deserves a shot to make this roster. And this is a roster where it's not concrete. You know, we 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 say that Quez Watson is go, is going uh, Watkins is going to make this team. This team the funny thing is the Eagles want to see this kid excel. Because he has that speed. He provides that other element. He can take the top off of defense. He can stretch the field. But they do have some concerns about him. Where's his head at? Has he changed? Has he put in the time and effort? I mean, when you think about it, outside of A.J., you know, Devonta, Quez Watkins, you still have two to three positions that are open. Now, if you keep Covey, obviously that's one of the wide receiver spots. But, right. you know, you got, you know, Zacchaeus, uh, Devin Allen, but Devin, you know, what's Devin Allen's role on this team? Hey, it's I think he he it, that feels like practice squad, Derek, to me. Uh, and yeah. I know I know he had the real nice return on Thursday, uh, really nice kick return, and he he can play the gunner spot. I I just I don't see it. I I think he's on the practice squad. What about Ingata? I mean, did he show you enough? I liked Ingata. I liked what I saw from him. Um, all right, well, all right. So let's go through it. So you got Devontae, AJ, Quez, Alamade. That's at least that's four locked in. You keeping six? Well, if you if you count Covey, there's five. A lot of teams keep six. There's one more spot open here. Um, Do they like Greg Ward more than Devin Allen or Ingata? Ugh. It's a big question, Mark. It's a big one. That's that's close. That I mean, that really this is going to rely a lot on what they're seeing in practice, I think. Uh the the fact that they still have Greg Ward on this roster tells you that they value him. Yeah. But you can't k- keep thinking that you can hide him because there's other teams. He's sure-handed, he's tough. Yeah. He's a good blocker. Carolyn's right. Reliable is a good word. Absolutely. You know, and he he's not a blazer, he's not a head turner, but he's consistent in what they ask him to do, whether it's blocking or catching. Yeah, he doesn't drop balls. So what is it? What is his value? Is it more important than Allen or Ingata? Yeah. You know, or are they still on the youth movement and they like Ingata better? I don't know, but I yeah. think Greg Ward deserves to make this roster based on 
his past performance. I, like I said, I'm a big Greg Ward fan. All he does is catch first downs, man. I, I look, does. Greg Ward has carved out a career. I give him a lot of props as a converted quarterback. I do. All right, this is a good question from Talon. You would know this better, Derek. You lock in on these on yeah. on the Packer punter who was who was released, Pat O'Donnell. Yeah. Any interest, Eagles? <sighs> I would say yes, but I just think this team is locked in on Sippos. And I know, see, you made me say that. You made me say it. Ugh. Although I will add this caveat, and I told you this last week, I was told that maybe the punter is not on the roster yet. So there's a lot of teams that are going to be releasing punters. I don't know much about this Green Bay punter, but they had a punter in here to, to challenge. A young, strong-legged punter to challenge Sippos when he was here. He lost the battle. Yeah. So that yeah. tells he, me he didn't even make it to final cuts. No. So that tells me somehow, some way, they like what they see in Sippos. Yeah. Which is not what you want to hear. Which is not what I want to hear. <laughs> but that's exactly you know. And here's, here's the thing, and and, and I, I I'm glad Chuck brought this up because I was thinking yes. about this this weekend. Okay. Yes. Matt Ariza, we we know the history here. Okay, he was. Found not guilty criminally. Uh, I, actually, it didn't even go to, I don't think it went to court, did it? I don't know, but whatever. No charges, criminal tra- charges were brought against him. There's a civil suit pending. Here's the only thing I'll say about it. He's the punter out of San Diego State. Why has not one team, not one, signed this guy? It's not just the Eagles, for Eagles fans who all who are all drooling over him. I get it. That tells me something. Like, they, they there's something else in the ether out there that is keeping teams away from him. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it, Rob. I really don't. Strong legged kicker. As a matter of fact, before he got um, suspended, people were wowing his hang time, his distance on his punt. Everybody loved this kid. And all of a sudden he's cleared, but he, he can't get a job. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what team. You know, let's face it. If you're going to have, if you're going to add a, a, anybody to a roster late, a kicker and punter is easier to add because they only have one thing to do. Right. Put yeah, the ball they, they, it's not like you're learning a system or anything. Yeah, you're just, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, angle kicks, deep kicks, hang time for yep. punt. Get used yeah. to your, your long snapper. There you, you go. You know, whatever. Yeah. That's all you got. Or your hold. Your guy's yeah. holding for you. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Um, so the fact you're right, Rob, I wonder this all the time. Why have teams shot away from him? I don't get it. Yeah. With, with his, 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 his ability on the field, I'm not talking about the off the field stuff. Yeah. This dude's on a roster somewhere. Yeah. So something's up. Something's up there. Anyway. Um, all right. So a couple guys who I think Derek should make it. Yeah. Uh, one, Eli Ricks had an excellent camp for them. Um, I, I think he's I think he's going to make it, in fact. Um, Josh well, Job. Oh, say, go ahead. I'm sorry. When you look at Eli Ricks, um, I was looking at the uh PFF college stats on Twitter on him. He graded out 90.2 covers great. He had 15 targets in a preseason, only six catches allowed, one interception, uh, three passes uh, defended, and a 54.9 completion percentage against him. Yep. Now, granted, he's playing a bunch of backup quarterbacks, but still, he's a rookie learning the way, and he battled well, and he made some some good plays. I agree with you. I think he's going to make this roster, right, yep. to be honest. Yeah, I think he's done enough uh, that he's going to be here. He, he's won – to keep your eye on um you know josh job is at a really good camp for them yep i think he's in good shape uh mario goodrich is another one that's that's kind of interesting um for them josiah scott we we know we talked about devin allen earlier but i, I would say some of those guys on the defense you know i'll tell you who's who's i think gonna be on the practice squad mm. that the, the ben van summeren kid he's made a nice impact linebacker he's converted uh, he was a fullback he converted to linebacker he's done a nice job yeah, I, I think I think he's one of those practice squad players that they like and they want to see develop a little bit more. A good size on him, you know. Um, I think uh, the last game, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he missed the tackle. But overall, he's, he's had a good camp. He's made a good showing in, in preseason games in his limited role. And I think they like the fact that he is, he is a guy with a good upside. And they're, they're, going willing, they're willing to invest in him. I don't, I don't think he makes the 53 because – I know the Eagles are going to wait until other teams make cuts. You may see one or two players added to this Eagles roster, depending on who's cut elsewhere at certain positions. 
And if that's the case, he's an insurance policy in the practice squad. I'll tell you. Um, and by the way, Barnett was at practice today for what it's worth. Um, he was there. Um, look, depth wise, they're not as deep as they were last year, but they're still deeper than most teams. Yeah. You know, just plain and simple. I mean, you look at the what they're if you're potentially trading somebody like Derek Barnett, you have you have good depth at your edge position. I think they have pretty good depth at defensive tackle, despite losing Javon Hargrave. Um, you know, I mean, where you worry a little bit, and we'll get into this, is linebacker and safety. But you're you're pretty deep at corner uh, with the three that you have for sure, as you're essentially your starters. If you want to throw Maddox in there, and I do consider him a starter. I mean, you're you're pretty deep, and then you go you go on the offensive side. Not a lot of teams have four running backs they feel good about. No, no. No, no. I, I, and, I'm, and as we sit here, Rob, I'm, I'm thinking about different teams out there. I don't know of another team that can go four deep at running back, to be honest. You know, a luxury for most teams is that they can go three. A lot of teams have a good dual, dual threat, interchangeable parts in a dual. Third, it, it's still a, a luxury that a lot of teams don't have. But if you're lucky, if you have it, you feel good about it. But to go four deep at your running back spot? Oof. And, and not not have a worry whatsoever about putting any one of those backs in at any given moment. That's that's not the norm across the National Football League. And the Eagles, you know, kudos to the Eagles for the way they structured this thing, and for the amount of money they didn't have to pay for a running back to come in here. Right. You know, but you got four different styles of runners when you look at this running uh, this running back quartet for the Eagles. You all four of them can catch passes, and you have one in DeAndre Swift who's a home run hitter in the running game or the passing game, you know, so they, they're, they're deep there. And that's why I said, no matter what Trey Sermon tried to do in training camp, no matter what he tried to do in the preseason game, and he got a heavy dose that whole first half, uh, this last preseason game against the Colts. And didn't do much, but do much. I still like him. Yeah. But look who he's running behind, you know? Yeah. So um, I still like him. I like everything about him. I just think he's he's expendable because of the other guy's presence on this roster. Yeah, I, and that's the thing. I like I, I see folks saying, you know, Swift's never been a number one, and yeah, you're right. I, I mean, the biggest question mark at running back. There's a lot of talent there, but the biggest question mark is health, and that applies to Penny. That applies certainly to DeAndre Swift, and then the danger there is if both one or both of those guys get hurt. Are, are Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott capable of – nobody's going to be like a workhorse, but are they capable of being, you know, to some extent, a number one back in the league? Jury's out a little bit there. Like, I yeah, I, yeah. I think they they really like Gainwell for sure. Like, there's no doubt about that. But do we know that over the course of 17 games he can be that guy and hold up? Right, exactly. But then, But then again, you don't have to run these guys in the ground. You know, whether they need a breather, whether they're a little nicked up, uh, whatever the case may be to give them extended time during a game, you can go four different directions, four different directions. And it doesn't affect the flow of the offense one bit, you know, and, and whoever made the comment, you know, Swift has never been a number one running back. You don't have to be a number one running back in this offense. Basically, Swift is a home run hitter and Eagles know that. Yeah, he is a home run hitter, whether he, he hits the hole and finds that second level, or if he's catching a pass in space. Anytime he gets the ball in open space, he has the capability of being a home run hitter with his quickness and speed. Yeah, that's, and that's why he's here. You're right. It, it's not going to be a Derrick Henry kind of thing where no, heck no. these guys are getting pounded. It, it, it's it's going to be, I, I don't know, between – like it, for, for DeAndre Swift, I, I would say you're looking at 12 to 15 touches – is that low? Maybe a little higher. Oh, right. You know, between runs and passes, probably the same slice for Gainwell if he's, you know, there because they have similar skill sets. You know, I see Penny at like a 10 carry per game guy, maybe. And then Boston Scott is a is is utilized in special circumstances, goal line, gi Giants, you know, whatever. He's good in those situations. So it's, it's going to have a different look. I think he, we sort of have to train our brain that yeah, it's yeah. not even going to be like it was – with Miles Sanders, no, you're not going to have one guy even getting that many touches per game. No, the only way one guy gets that many touches is if there's a multitude of injuries to the other guys. That's it. Exactly. Yeah, that's the only way I see it. Uh, if they're smart, 
You don't run Penny into the ground because of his injury history. Uh, you don't have to run Swift into the ground. He's not the biggest back, but as we saw the, the other game, he's strong. He can lower that shoulder, bounce off tackle, and kick it to the outside if he has to. He has those attributes. Gainwell is a strong back who can catch it and run it. We know what Boston Scott is. So you don't have to overuse any of these guys, to be honest. And you don't change the play calling. You don't change the concept of how you're trying to attack. Even though they're four different style backs, there's always a package for each one of those guys that they'll run against an opponent to bring out this, their pluses more so than their minuses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and look, this they went into this wide open, like their eyes wide open, that this is what it was going to be this year. They know that. They they That's why they brought in the kind of guys that they brought in. Part of it was financial, but part of it was the skill yeah. set. I mean, they traded for Swift, but they signed Penny. They already had Gainwell here and Scott here, and they got yeah. them for cheap, uh, and they knew what it was going to be. So I, I'm good with it. I, look, I think the other part is, too, let's face it, when you have this offensive line, you don't need to be Walter Payton, you know. Hey, yeah, I, yeah. So you should be able to run the ball well if you stay healthy behind this crew. You, you're going to get. I think they're going to have like guys. I think it's going to be a combo effort, Derek, where guys are going to be around 700 yards, maybe rushing or 800, and that's fine. Combined they're, is what you're going to be looking at. Big picture here. You know, it's, it, I feel very good about every aspect of this Eagles offense from the starting offensive line, even with the backups, to the wide receivers, meaning the front two, A.J. and Devontae, to the quarterback, obviously, and to the running backs. Not every team can say that, you know. Yeah. There's always some disjointed element to an offense with most teams. This, this team is hitting the ground running. They've added a couple of pieces, but they're hitting the ground running and won't have to hold back on anything no matter who they bring in. Right. That's the thing for me. There, like, there are areas that are, you know, legitimate. And we're going to go into offensive strengths and weaknesses in a second here. But let's face it. it you know, I, I'm not going to take all the gusto from the next segment beer. But offensively, I'm not worried. Like, I, 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 this team is going to score if they stay healthy. I have no doubt about that. Between the personnel, the quarterback that they have, yep. the receivers that they have, the tight end that they have, the offensive line that they have, the fact that Brian Johnson's been here, they're going to score. I don't worry about that. I don't either. I, I worry about the other side of the ball a little bit, but I, you know, offensively, but yeah, they'll be okay. All right, let's come back. Uh, let's go offensive strengths, weaknesses, defensive strengths, weaknesses. We'll continue to update you on anything we hear, not only eagle wise, but around the NFL with guys being cuts, trades, all that kind of stuff. We'll keep that rolling. So don't go anywhere. He's Derek. I'm Rob. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. I want to tell you right now about Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group because it, it is very difficult, A, to find the right person. It's a scary proposition. You don't really know how to go about it sometimes. And, you know, maybe you are not investing your money the way that you should be. But Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group have been doing it for years. And I can tell you from you know personal experience that I have entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollers with Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. For you, it could be retirement planning. It could be your 401k. It could be insurance, you know, review. You're not really utilizing things the way that you'd like. You might have a small business and you're trying to get your employee benefits off the ground. That's another resource that Jim can help you with. Give him a call right now and find out. 610-996-4751. 610-996-4751. You could also email him as well. Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray dot 